welcome to Unit 6, uh, all about starches. In this particular chapter, we're going to look at starches in many different forms to see how humans interact with them. Uh, starches involve more than just food. Uh, some of the earliest known uses besides food included this papyrus right here. Uh, the Egyptians learned how to take papyrus, used the starches in this to make paper. And we've all seen all the manuscripts uh, that are out there that still survive even to this day. Uh, even to this day, you can see Egyptians still making paper out of papyrus. Uh, starch is used for many other things that we're going to find out later on in this unit. We use it with sugar to make syrup. We use it uh, in clothing to firm it up. We use it in alcohol. We use it in medicines. When you take that vitamin, it has starch on it so they can get into your stomach. Uh, common ways that plants store starch are with things called uh, rhizomes, bulbs, and corms. Here's some pictures of them. Uh, this is uh, rice over here and this picture over here. Um, you can see here that there's these little projections coming out. These are called rhizomes. They're just beneath the ground and they Besides storing food, they allow the plant to expand itself and grow into other areas. We see other things here too. We see garlic, for example, right here, where uh, the starch stores the energy of the plant in these little, little bulblets right here. And in fact, everything you want to know about the plant is in this little bulblet. If you plant this in the ground, you'll get a new garlic. It'll be just like the one that is here. In fact, uh, uh, this is springtime in this area right here, and it's just about time now to plant them in the ground. Uh, up above here, these are something called corms. And these are crocuses, and you, these are one of the first plants that come up. All the information of that plant is stored in there besides all the food that they would need to go in for almost the whole next year. The most important uh, starch is the potato, of course. Uh, the potato has uh, saved the food from starvation, saved the world from starvation. 2008 was designated as the International Year of the Potato. It's the fourth most important food crop in the world. Uh, we are learning how to change this potato. We're learning how to add more protein to it. We learn how to make it more to prevent it from having diseases. Uh, 2008 was declared the International Year of the Potato. We know, for example, that if we can get potato to the people in Afghanistan, that they will probably stop planting poppies. Not only will, will they make more money, but they will also become uh, less malnutrition. It takes very little bit of land to grow a potato for the entire family and still have some left over to make money. We hope that by shipping tons of potato seed over to uh, Afghanistan and other developing countries, we may be able to reduce hunger, stop poverty, and improve uh, standards of living. This is a map of the world where potatoes are being produced in large quantities. And if you look at this map, uh, we look at the United States, uh, for example. Uh, there is some potatoes being formed over there, but if you look at the darker colors that you see out there, uh, we see darker colors instead over in, in Europe. And surprisingly, we see a lot of darker colors over there in China in India. We think of China and India as people eat a lot of rice. However, there's an awful lot of potatoes being formed there. The potato was not native to any of these areas. The potato was native to the Americas. Right here, this is the coast of South America. And on this coast of South America, just up in the hills, the Andes Mountains, that's where the potato is from. Now, these colored area along here shows the course of the Andes Mountains. It extends down the whole length of South America. 
uh, very close to the Pacific Ocean. In these hills, in these mountaintops, the potato plant was discovered by the Incan Indians. We found potato remains that date back to many years before Christ. Uh, probably even before that, we find that. The Incans grew and ate them. They felt they were so important that the Almas designated them as godlike. The Incans learned how to uh, use them in many different ways. They learned how to lay them on the ground when it was cold outside, and they can make dehydrated potatoes. So now the potatoes can be used for longer trips. They also learned how to store them in cold, dry areas. They even made uh, types of potato chips. Now their potato was slightly different. Back thousands of years ago, it was probably a different color, the purple skins and yellow flesh. From then, we have developed all sorts of different varieties. Here's the most common one when you go to the supermarket. See the red potato. Now, you have to remember that this was not brought by the Incans or by the Mayans up through Mexico, through the southern United States, and back to New England. No, it was actually brought back by the early Spanish explorers to Europe. Uh, when Christopher Columbus and his people brought back plants like this. Uh, they originally had come to South America to develop gold to get silver, but probably the real silver and gold were these potatoes and possibly corn. Americans eat a lot of potatoes. We usually have up to 65 kilograms of them per year. Look at the, all these different varieties that you see here. You see some that are long and thin. You see some that are round. You see some that are thicker. Some are yellow. Some are purple. Some are orangish. We have a lot of different potatoes. When you go to the supermarket, you can see all these different varieties that are there. How did the potato save the world? Well, when the potato was first brought over, it wasn't naturally accepted as a great food. It turns out that the leaves look like a deadly plant in Europe. So it wasn't naturally taken over. But as people realized how nutritious the potatoes were, it was taken over by many countries. The country that took the most of them was Ireland. Ireland was a poor country. The soil was very poor, rocky, but it turned out potatoes could grow there very well. On just a small amount of land, a farmer can grow potatoes to feed his entire family, as well as sell some on the marketplace and make some money. This increased their standard of living. And because of the standard of living going up, because there was less malnutrition, the Irish population increased threefold. Unfortunately, this had some bad effects because at that time, uh, this one map here shows um, the pictures of England with uh, Ireland right next to it, right here. That's uh, Northern Ireland that's highlighted out there. And, uh, you know, the European coast was right over here. This is France down in here. Potatoes were growing well. However, at that time, uh, the Irish were very repressed people. Uh, and new laws were put in effect by the British to keep them under control. They're called the, the penal laws, where the um, uh, if you were a Catholic, you weren't allowed to vote. If you were a Catholic, you must pass your land down to all the people in your family, which stops the advent of large farms. Uh, in England itself and the rest of Europe, the, uh, usually it was the eldest son who took the whole farm. and then kept the family with him. This kept the farms very large. In Ireland, that was not allowed. Um, the Irish people could own some land, but they're not allowed to large, large tracts of land. They depended very much upon the potato. However, the potato that they depended upon was one single variety. So what happened, one single variety, this allowed a fungus to come in. When the fungus did come in, it, it 
killed off the entire potato crop. The potatoes could be underground being kept in storage. When they pulled them up the next day, they were just a mushy mess. It took a very short period of time, became a mushy mess. The Irish population, which had grown over threefold, now suddenly lost two thirds of its people. People started emigrating to the United States at that time. The Irish population went from over three million down to less than one million. All because they counted on one variety of the potato. And as we go on, we're going to see that that is one of the things nowadays which we try to avoid. 1872, the Russian Burbank potato was uh, developed. Uh, Luther Burbank was just a kid when he was noticing that there were some plants in his mother's garden which seemed more resistant to not only fungus, but resistant to the bugs that were in the yard. Uh, the big bug at that time was a um, a big bug that the people would have to go out there and pick them right off the leaf and dump them into bags. He noticed something else that was growing really well. He took it in by using cloning techniques, which we discussed in some of the early units, made thousands of these plants. And so again, by careful selection using the genes, he introduced the rest of Burbank potato. It's extremely popular right now. He sold the rights for $150. You can imagine what that is like nowadays. Uh, here's another type of potato, the Maris Piper potato. Uh, Again, this is resistant to other organisms that are out there. The potato cyst is one of them. Uh, when you're harvesting potatoes, you have to remember uh, they're usually done by machines nowadays because it's just too expensive to do them by hand. The machines can bruise some of the potatoes. And uh, because of this, you have to develop varieties with thicker skins. The, the Maris Piper was one such thing. Again, too, this is one that has good cooking and frying capabilities, and we make a lot of potato chips from this. And if you've ever looked at your potato chip, you know there's a ring around it. That's actually the, the vascular tissue. If you remember from um, Unit 2, the xylem and phloem are that little black line that you see there. This is the potato bug. Uh, which people used to pick up by hand. You can see the, the damage that is done up there by these voracious animals. They can go there and they can just go through the whole plant in possibly two days. They used to be picked by hand, but now we know that what we can do is we can pick them and treat them with BT, which is a type of product given up by plants.